Hi there, welcome back. Still watching Market Fatafat. Let's keep it going with all the stocks in news today. And on the technicals now, we are joined by Forum Cheda, founder at Chart Analytics. Forum, thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us today. Now, the first stock you flagged up for us is India Mart Intermesh. Last six months, if I take a look at this stock, has not done anything at all. So, what are you penciling in for this stock? Uh, now, can we see some upwards momentum coming in? Well, hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, well, yes, as you rightly said, it has been consolidating for the past six months. However, now the stock is started building up some kind of a volume. Uh, one is that from the past, say, around 10 to 15 trading sessions, the stock price has been consolidating in a very narrow range of nearly 100 points between 2630 on the lower side and 2735 on the higher side. Now, in spite of the stock, rather the market, we saw the mid cap and the small cap space also uh, moving down. The stock recovered very well from its lows and indicating some strength. Now, currently, the stock price is very close to the breakout level or it's already moved above those levels. Thus, it's indicating that, yes, there is some bullish momentum that we can expect. As far as an indicator like parabolic SAR is concerned, it is already signaling like a fresh buy mode. And secondly, the stock has now developed like a higher top, higher bottom formation, along with the stock moving above the 200-day moving average. So, the underlying trade is also turning bullish. So, for all these factors, I think the stock can, uh, we can expect some momentum in the stock. Thus, a buy can be considered near the levels of 2700. A strict stop loss should be maintained below the levels of 2630. And one can look for a potential target of closer to 2850. Okay, 2850 is a potential target one could keep an eye out on. Let's move on, talk over the next stock. And Raymond Ashesha is the stock that you've picked out for us. What's the news flow here today? Why is this in focus? Yes, this is on the back of a report that came in from Mutilal Oswal's research desk today morning. The stock is holding up with gains of over 2% where they are maintaining their buy stance and they've given a target price of 3,755. The stock currently trades at 3,150 odd levels. They say that the company is pushing for growth with simplifying structure. As far as their real estate segment is concerned, it is aiming for 20% growth on a sustainable basis which they believe is a quite uh, is quite a positive pipeline continues to remain very strong for their real estate business with a couple of projects which are in advanced stages of closure as far as lifestyle business is concerned growth continues to remain very strong uh, with respect to their apparel brand product expansion will also continue so very positive report that has come in from Motilal Oswal and they are also positive on the engineering segment of the company where they say that the growth will be led by aerospace segment operating cost synergies and benefit from China plus one so on the back of this report the stock is holding up with gains of over 2% all right, Achesha, let's uh, move on then. Let's get a technical check once more. We're talking about Apollo Hospitals on the charts now for um, last six months or so, uh, YTD, 10% move coming in. Uh, what are you penciling in for the stock going ahead? Which direction mainly uh, do you see this stock moving in now? We'll just talk about a little bit on the historical side that since Feb, it formed a high of 6874 and it declined nearly 17%. That is, it halted at 5693, which was close to a 200 day moving average. It did not go below those levels and now gradually we can see since June the stock price is now being uh, showing some signs of upward movement or an improvement. So now the stock, I would say from down, it has started moving in the sideward range and now the stock is attempting to now break out from the sideward range also indicating that there can be some upward momentum. So now the trend is changing very well, there is some small accumulation seen and now the stock price is breaking it's attempting to break out from a resistance level of 6375 currently the stock price is very close to those levels only thus it's a good safe level to buy the stock a uh, stop loss can be maintained at the levels of closer to 6249 and a target can be considered closer to around 6600 Okay, keep an eye out on those uh, levels over there for Apollo Hospital. Let's move on to the next stock and talk about HG Infra. Now, two news flows. One, they've received an order of 465 crores, which is an EPC order for the solar energy development. So, we are keeping an eye out on that. As well as MK has actually reinitiated coverage on HG Infra. By rating, SOTP target price they've given is 2,100 rupees per share, which is a 23% upside. Now, they said that this is the best in class metrics. They said that some system is in place for future growth and what they are expecting is a CAGR growth of 21 to 22 percent each in terms of revenue as well as a pact over the next three years so yes keeping an eye out on that order win plus a brokerage note two factors that we're keeping an eye out on though the stock is not doing anything exciting was a bit on the positive side of or you know a higher end yeah. that we saw in the morning but then since then quite flattish in trade today 
All right, moving on. Let's talk about an earnings candidate. Numbers trickled in yesterday. Ankita, Delta Corp is the one you picked out for. Tell us what the earnings look like. Delta Corp. In fact, the shares fell six percent uh, after it reported a sixty-seven percent fall in the consolidated net profits for the quarter ended June. Now, the profit slipped twenty-one crores in uh, in the June quarter against a net profit of sixty-eight crores in a year uh, go period. Now the net profit fell sixty-nine percent from seventy-two crores in the previous quarter. Also, revenue from operations declined thirty percent to one hundred and eighty-one crores in uh, the June quarter. The EBITDA also slipped sixty-eight uh, percent to thirty crores against ninety-five crores from a period a year. Go. Margins also dropped sixteen percent as against thirty six point nine percent on a year on year basis. Now the board has also recommended a final dividend of one point two five rupees per share, and that is of course subjected to approval of shareholders uh, to ensuring uh, in, ensuing a general meeting that we are expecting. But uh, on the back of poor weak set of results coming in for Delta Corp, the stock is trading with cuts of uh, over a percent and a half. All right, let's move on then. Talk about two uh, stocks that are holding up pretty smartly today: uh, MGL and IGL, as uh, Mahanagar Gas and Indranagar Gas stocks. I'm talking about. Now, the news is that the government is likely to rationalize taxation structure on CNG, and the central excise duty on CNG may be reduced significantly. The government may cut central excise duty on CNG to five to seven percent from the current 14.4 percent. Now, uh, what's the impact of this going to be? Most beneficial for companies like MGL and IGL, followed by Gujarat. Gas. The reduction of excise duty was in consideration for a very long time. Remember, and any reduction will make CNG much cheaper than petrol and diesel. Now, lower tax would reduce prices uh, of uh, prices by five to six rupees uh, for say, uh, CNG per kg from the uh, current selling price in Mumbai at seventy-five rupees to sixty-nine point four rupees per kg. Now, why is this positive for both of these companies? Now, more car conversions will ensure higher volumes. Lower prices will give city gas distribution companies more headroom to increase prices. in the future and cng volumes contribute 70 to 73% of total volumes for mgl and igl and 30% of the total volumes for gujarat gas so all three of these companies will be in focus today but mgl and igl are doing pretty well on the back of this news flow Now both of these stocks are also in focus on the back of this story that we broke at ET now yesterday and to understand the impact of what uh, this news could mean we uh, caught up with the management of mgl as well as gale on this news flow listen into what they had to say currently it is 14 and a half percent 14% in uh, cng and if it cut, comes down the benefit will be passed on to the customer around 7 8 rupees uh, benefit will be there in case excise comes down other uh, prospect is that in case gas comes under gst then also excise will be submerged in the taxation system and uh, then uh, whatever is the differential benefit will be passed on to the customer as of now we expect 10 to 12 rupees is the guidance for the margins and the price hike happens because of input tax what is the alternate fuel cost what are our volume growth uh, expectations and so on and so forth so there are se- several reasons on which we decide when to raise the price and to what extent the impact of this excise duty even if it is made 50% from the current 14% to 7% say uh, it will be about uh, 4 rupees to 4 rupees 50 paise per kg which is a uh, a big relief uh, you know if it is passed on to the consumer it will be a big relief for the uh, consumer gas comes into gst it can easily the gas demand can easily double in next uh, uh, i would not say 3 to 5 years but in 7 years uh, we are normally talking about 2030 31 horizon so we we are sure if it goes into gst and the gst rates are mild it would it, the, the demand in of gas in the country should double Okay, let's move on to the next stock. And Ashesha Global Spirits is the power stock that you've kept on your radar today. What's the news for you? Yes, in line with the broader markets, the stock has also recovered significantly from the lowest point of the day, absolutely flat as we speak. Incred came out with a note where they are maintaining their ad rating on the stock, but they've gone ahead and hiked their target price from about fifteen sixty-two. They've uh, increased their target price to fifteen ninety-nine rupees per share. As far as raw material pricing is concerned, they are very positive. They expect raw material prices to moderate from current levels. EBITDA margins of ethanol and ENA or extra neutral ethanol segment are expected to expand. They also say that the company is firing on all cylinders with respect to ENA, ethanol, 
or Indian made foreign liquor brands as well. Raw material prices have moderated and negative contribution from the IMFL segment is also expected to moderate from FY28. So on the back of very positive report that has come in from Incred with a buy rating, the stock is in focus today has recovered significantly from the lowest point of the day. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on uh, uh, Global Spirits there. Let's move on to the next stock that we are talking about and we have Mankind Pharma. Now, obviously, uh, what came in was that, you know, we were expecting that block deal to happen of 0.9% change of equity hands. That has taken place, which is around 771 crores approximately is the value of that 0.9% uh, stake. So, yes, we're keeping an eye out on that. What we understand is that, you know, the seller of this. Now, we'll watch out for the final names of the seller, but we understand that the seller of this is capital group affiliate Hema CIPEF which was eyeing the stake sale this is what we got to know yesterday and now today the stake sale has taken space uh, place so let's keep an eye on the buyers of this as well and uh, surely interesting to watch out for uh, where the stock is headed tomorrow as well but 2.2% uh, uptick right now is what the stock is managing to hold on to all right with that let's uh, move on then and talk about Two new debutants on D Street today, two IPOs that made us a very good uh, debut in fact on D Street. First up, let's talk about MCure Pharmaceuticals. Those share, uh, shares made a strong debut today after listing at 1,325 rupees a share, which is a premium of 31.5% over the issue price of 1,008 rupees. The price band of this IPO was set between 960 and 1,008 per share. So, very decent debut coming in for uh, Namita Thapar backed MCure Pharma as well. Moving on, let's talk about the second D Street uh, debutant and that is Bansal Wires. They, uh, these shares also began trading at 356 uh, a piece on NSE, which is a premium of 39% coming in to the issue price of 256 rupees per share. The Bansal Wire IPO price band was set at 243 and 256 between those amounts. And Bansal Wire IPO listing was in line largely with what the street was estimating. Analysts had expected a listing premium of around 30 to 40%, and it has listed with a premium of 39%, so largely in line with what the street was estimating. And good moves coming in for both of those stocks. Okay, uh, you know the next stock I just want to mark is the one that is flashing at the bottom of your screen. We're going to talk about m, &M. Now, uh, they have given a clarification. They have uh, said that they wish to inform uh, the exchanges that there is no linkage between the price cut of XUV700 variant and UPEV hybrid policy as reported by some uh, media. So, yes, that's the clarification coming in. They said that they have announced the cut in XQ XUV700 in continue. Uh, 700, I beg your pardon, in continuation of uh, their business strategy execution uh, that they had as well. And uh, there's no linkage between the price cut of uh, the variant of XUV uh, 700 as well as the UP hybrid policy is what the highlight is coming in. Uh, also, they are saying that their new XUV 700 booking in June was 23% higher than May and there is no concern in terms of unsold inventories as that was reported by uh, 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 reports. Uh, they firmly believe that the hybrid is in interim as well as uh, costly solutions and they have the readiness to offer high quality products for all solutions that uh, their customers desire. That's the latest update that we're seeing coming in. You know, uh, maybe I think there's a, uh, if we refresh it, there's a slight bit of an uptick that we're seeing. It was down uh, more than 7% at one point of time, now down almost 6.6%. So yes, slight bit of that recovery, spike at least with a, a spike up. If we can refresh the chart also, we will see that uh, that is what is an uptick but yes Shristi is joining you with us also to give us that more update Shristi I was just reading it but what does this actually mean because surely this update is important to watch out for because today m, &M was down and out well, yes, m and was actually hammered in today's trading session on the back of the price cuts and there were some concerns in the industry that the waiting period has actually cooled off. Maybe it's because of the demand concerns, but m and has come out with a clarification where they are saying that the demand continues to be robust for their new XUV700 and they also highlighted that the bookings in the month of June were actually 23% higher than what the company registered back in the month of May and they're also saying that there is no no concern of the unsold inventory. So what the reports were also highlighting that because the inventory level in the passenger vehicle industry as a whole is at an all-time high level and maybe because keeping that in view, m, &M has gone ahead and taken this um, step to cut down its prices in order to push the demand. But m, &M has come out with a clarification that for XUV700, the sole model that the company has come out for the price cuts, there is no demand concern and there has been a 
a double digit growth in the month of june for the bookings on a month on month comparison what the company is also saying uh, that um, the price cut related to all these uh, the news flow related to the evs and hybrid policies mnm is all in for that they are uh, they uh, they are also saying that they believe that the hybrid is an interim and a costly solution for now so they have also given their take on this particular front but other than that they are also saying that what all price cut that they have done is something that the company has already planned for but during the period their production uh, capacity has also increased so all these factors have played in with the announcement that company has made it's a clarification by the company they are also saying that this price cut is applicable only for the next 4 months and not beyond that for now and hence we are seeing that on the back of this news flow and clarification the stock is also recovering a bit back to you All right, Rishi. Thanks for joining us so quickly and taking us through that update coming in from M and M and that clarification. Our stock uh, did see some improvement, but seems to be slipping once again in trade. But on that note, we'll step into a very short break on this edition of Market for Tafar. We'll be right back with more buzzers in today's trade. Welcome back you're watching Market for Tata on 18 now let's keep it going with all the buzzing stocks then and the next stock is uh, Kaltim Forum that's the one you've picked out for us not the one that I've seen on a lot of technical analysts so an interesting one what are the charts indicating Well, uh, if we talk about it, uh, the stock had actually formed a low near 280 in June, and since then the stock price has shot up and moved to nearly 400 levels, to be precise, uh, 397. And since then the stock price has been retracing nearly 38.2 percent as per the Fibonacci. And now it is very close to the 50-day uh, moving, or uh, rather 50-day, uh, sorry, uh, 50 percent retracement as per the Fibonacci, and which coincides with multiple moving averages of 50, 100, and 200. so all these factors do trigger that there is good support at these levels and since it's a retracement and we've seen a good volume in the past month it indicating that there is some kind of an accumulation and some bullish momentum that can be expected thus uh, i am considering a buy uh, in uh, khadim at the levels of around 350 to around 355 Uh, with the stop loss to be maintained closer to a level of 344 and uh, one can look for a potential target of closer to 380 levels All right, so buy call coming in on Khadim India from Forum. Let's move on. Ankita, you picked out JSW Steel. Quarter one updates are in. Tell us what they look like. Well, yes, JSW Steel has reported its uh, quarter one updates. In fact, it is trading with cuts of uh, almost one and a half percent right now. Well, it's because of, of the fact that uh, you know it has announced uh, the consolidated crude steel uh, production figures uh, for. Uh, Uh, quarter one, FY25, and the company has reported an output of 6.35 million tons, which is falling a 1 percent on a year-on-year basis and a 6 percent uh, cut on a quarter-on-quarter basis. And the marginal decline in the attributed primary to planned maintenance uh, shutdowns, and despite the reduction in the crude steel production. JSW Steel has maintained a robust capacity utilization rate of 87% at its uh, Indian operations for its Indian operations uh, for the quarter one of FY25. But weak set of uh, um, you know uh, updates coming in for JSW Steel, and on the back of that, we are seeing uh, the stock knock down in trade. Surely keeping an eye out on JSW Steel, but MRPL that's the one you kept on your radar uh, forum. When you look at it, last six months around a 70% return is what we could say. Uh, what's the word coming in now for uh, the move going forward? Uh, well, MRPL from the past two months had been consolidating in a very narrow range. So on the lower side it was closer to 200 levels, and on the higher side closer to 220. So it was like a 10% range. Now yesterday we did see that uh, the stock price did give a good breakout and it closed positively. Up by nearly six and a half percent, and uh, the most interesting part is that there was exceptional increase in volume, which was supporting this breakout and confirmed it as well that there is some momentum in the stock. Today, uh, since we've seen the markets also being down and a lot of stocks also uh, retracing, so this stock price has also retraced back to its breakout level. Uh, since it is retesting those levels, but the volume has been very good yesterday, I would yet consider a good buy, but at a lower level, closer to around 225, which also is a very good support level near the 100-day moving average. And one can maintain a strict stop loss below the levels of 215 and look for a potential target of closer to around 258 to closer to 260. All right, so that's the view coming in on MRPL. Ashesha, you picked out LTI Mine Tree for us. Tell us why you picked out for us. Tell us also news flow. Well, yes, Incred has gone ahead and upgraded the stock to add from their earlier reduced rating ahead of IT season, IT company's results season. 
They've also gone ahead and upped their target price to 3,998 from the current target price of about 5,377, which is where the stock is currently trading. They also say that re recovery in the BFSI segment and revenue from large customers will aid revenue growth for the company from here on. As far as margins are concerned, Incred believes that margins are perhaps bottoming out and that company could report double-digit revenue growth in the fourth quarter of FY25 on the back of strong uh, uh, revenue from BFSI segment and as, uh, as well as the high-tech recovery segment is concerned. So on the back of this report that has come in from Incred where they've gone ahead and upgraded the stock and they've also increased their target price, the stock is in focus today. All right, so positive news flow coming in for LTI Mind Tree on the back of a, bro a brokerage um, note upgrade coming in. But Forum, you've picked out GICRE on the technicals. The stock has doubled or more than doubled, in fact, in the last one year itself. Do you think this momentum is sustainable? Do you see this rally continuing or are you penciling in some bit of softness going ahead? Uh, well, if uh, we talk about few of the insurance companies also, they picked up some momentum in the past two to three trading sessions also, and it was consolidating before. And as you rightly said, that it's already uh, seen a good up move also. However, uh, technically speaking, the stock did give a breakout as on uh, Monday uh, from a downward sloping trend line. So there was a resistance, a good breakout coming in. It uh, came back today, tested those levels, and even from today's low of around 398, the stock price has now recovered and moved back to around 412 levels. So overall, it's picking up momentum. It is in an uptrend since it's moving above the multiple moving averages of 50, 100, 200. Secondly, there is a good crossover where the 50-day is crossing above the 100-day moving average, indicating that the short-term momentum is now picking up. So since there is good uh, momentum that is being picked up, uh, at the lower levels of around 315, there is a good base formation of the stock for the past around three to four months, that is from March to nearly May. And now the uh, stock making a breakout is all indicating that there is some bullishness in the stock. Thus, uh, I would recommend a buy at uh, these levels of around 412 to around 400. Stop loss should be maintained below the levels of 389 and one can look for a higher target of closer to 450. Okay, that was stock number 10, GICRE. Keep an eye out on that. 450 is a target that one could watch out for from Forum. That's the word coming in. But uh, with that, we're absolutely out of time on this edition. So thank you so much, Forum, Amar, Ankita, as well as Ashesha, for joining in with us on the show today. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, bid you goodbye. It's Nehi, myself, as well as the team who put the show together. Thank you so much for tuning in. But as we are tuning out... Let's listen in to, uh, you know, Karishma who's filed a report specially coming in on the outgoing Indian team uh, head coach Rahul Dravid uh, has been provided yet another example uh, to the world that he is called the gentleman of the gentleman's game and Dravid has declined uh, to uh, the additional 2.5 crore rupees bonus that is offered by the BCCI after India's 320 World Cup triumph. Listen in to this report filed by my colleague Karishma. Well, yes, absolutely. This is something uh, that Rahul Dravid is known for, his principles, his uh, respect that he has for his uh, team members. He really, um, you know, when we talk about the spirit of the team, this is something that uh, Rahul Dravid uh, can really be an example of, uh, of course, choosing to take equal prize money. He was offered 5 crore rupees, but he said that he's going to take 2.5 crore rupees uh, so that his team members get the same amount and that is his coaching staff gets the same amount and that is a very, very nice gesture on part of Rahul Dravid and this is not the first time that he's done something like this. In 2018 as well uh, during the Under-19 World Cup, he was offered uh, 50 lakh rupees and the coaching staff was offered 20 and 30 lakh rupees respectively, but he said, no, I will uh, not take the higher prize money and then it was equally divided and everyone got uh, 25 lakh rupees each. So this is something uh, that uh, Rahul Dravid, uh, you know, always thinks of, which is his team members, which is uh, thinking about his uh, coaching staff because he believes that he's not, they are not uh, playing under him, they're not coaching under him, but with him and this is something that always is going to separate Rahul Dravid from all the other former cricketers uh, that we've seen, from all, uh, you know, former coaches uh, that we've uh, seen Rahul Dravid is always always going to be a special one and Rohit Sharma also took to Instagram to pen a special note uh, for his Rahul Bhai saying that it has been an absolute honor to play with him. If you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET Now.